Hey, yeah, yeah, let's do it. The soundtrack of Miami, Miami One, Tony the Hitman, hanging out with you guys. And on the phone, I got Charlie Rodriguez and George Lamont. Charlie, how you feeling, man? George, I'm doing, George, Tony, I'm doing about as good as you can possibly be doing. I'm just pretending I'm living in a 10 by 10 jail cell right about now. Oh, man, I hear <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, man, uh, you got two old smoky fogies on the phone, and this guy doesn't even know who he's talking to right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, George Lamont, I expect that from you. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? I think this is the first, uh, this is the first time I've been on with you guys, right? Because I know I did a couple of drops for you. Yeah, yeah, th th you've done a few drops for us, and uh, you've actually been with us for a long time, man. We're yeah, going for a long time. back. To, we're going back to the 1980s, from yeah. the Power yeah. 96 era, all the way till today. You've really been with us for the past 35 years, brother. Yeah, it's too long, man. I want a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, yeah, let me tell you, as long as we're doing freestyle music, there ain't no divorce. There ain't no divorce. <laughs> this shit is infectious. <laughs> this, this, this this is like the glove that OJ Simpson had. It's a perfect fit, man. Yeah, exactly, you do, man. Brother, you do freestyle. You're you're one of the pioneers. You led it from back in the day when when Funky Frank brought you over here on from Power ninety six. You did all those Miami shows back in the day. You ain't stopped a bit. Wasn't Bo Bo was also on the air, right? She was the air personality as well. Yeah, she was yeah, on Power ninety six. Yeah, Bo and Mindy Tanner. Uh, Tanner. We Tanner. also had uh, Mark Mosley. Cox on the radio, that's right. Everybody. You you know all those players from back in the day. What were some of the nice clubs that you loved to perform back in the day? Uh, now, you're talking to a 53-year-old guy. Now, now you got to try to make me remember. Um, <laughs> Bro, I know you can De remember. <laughs> I know Deco's, Deco's was, was, was a good one. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, there was one uh, by South Beach that was, uh, it was, uh, it was an old movie theater. Cameo. What was it called before? Cameo. 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 Let me tell you. Cameo. Cameo. That was, if you wanted, it, like, we're talking when we were in our early 20s. If you wanted to get in trouble and you didn't want to get caught by your girlfriend or you didn't want to get caught by your boyfriend, just go to Cameo. The place was so dark, everyone looks the same. And plus, we're all, we were so drunk and high that, you know, it was like, it was like, yeah, oh, you were there? Oh, yeah, I was there. You were there? Yeah, I was there too. Bro, it was the amazing. Cameo, the Cameo Theater, it was at 1400 Washington. It held almost 3,000 people. Yeah. I did a ton of shows there. And, and you're right. I can remember when the artist would go on stage, it's pitch dark, except for the club lighting. You would get lost in that place. Yeah, you would get lost. And, and, and it reminded me of the Palladium here in New York City because the Palladium was the uh, same theater as that, but it was a little bit bigger. And uh, I also remember Warsaw. Warsaw was a gay club. Yeah. Was it a gay club at first? Yeah. yeah. Was it was a yes. gay club. So I know that there was a, I remember when I was on Columbia Records, um, my, uh, my, uh, my executive had to, representative had to take me there because I think there was a DJ that was, uh, he was charting Billboard Records and I think he tried to batter the heart of one of the songs. So I had to go there and, uh, you know, it, the system was ridiculous. It was right on the corner. It was a hot spot to go. I mean, it was like one club was open for like about a year or maybe mo close to a year. And then another one would pop up. It was just constant cars in the street like the strip was just the place to be and uh, there was just music everywhere like you didn't even have to go to a club because there was just music pumping for more cars 808s you had big bass cabinets with cars coming like half half down the street and you already heard them rumbling i mean you guys had the art for the bass man you guys made bass sound clear <laughs> hey <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing wrong with your memory you just have it you just described South Beach in the 80s to the T. Everybody had money because everybody was sell selling drugs. So from all over the world, everybody thought it was easy to have a club on South Beach. So you'd have it for a couple of months, somebody else would come in, and over and over and over, that's how South Beach rolled for many, many years. Somebody would come over from Europe, a new club would come in, and that made it easy for me because all these rookie nightclub owners they didn't know what to promote. I did. It was Power yeah. 96 and freestyle music. That was the key to success. That was, that was the recipe, man. Everybody was listening to it. I remember my first memory of, um, of Power 96. Uh, now, remember, I'm, in, I'm into sound. So I, I was taught by Chris Barbosa and Mark Liggett, the people who produced Shannon and, and all those guys. And, and I, I, I have a good ear. And I remember I was listening to Power 96 
And the broadcast that was happening there was way different from the broadcasting that was happening in the Big Apple in New York, because we already had a dance station before, before, um, I'm sure you guys have danced, but we had uh, early on with KTU and Paco and, and, and BLS. So the DJs on that station here in New York City, they used to use tons of compression and reverb on their voice. So they sounded like God when they got on the radio. And, you know, we had a couple of years because they used to do disco over here, just like they did disco down there. And I remember listening to the, bro I don't know who was on, but I remember the sound was totally different and it sounded so like, it just felt organic and like street, it had this street rugged sound, which was kind of dope. And I remember listening to, I'm like, these guys sound like, like badasses on the radio. Like they're ready to just like, play the, the shit out of these these odd dance records and it, over here it was all pretty boy toys over here on the radio you know trying to sound all pretty and stuff but i, I remember that the djs they sounded like because a lot of guys over here started like they started, just sounded like radio jocks the guys down there started like guys from, from the street like right guys that you knew from the street hanging out and i'm like i i could relate to that it was, it was pretty cool you had a lot of young guys up and coming yeah it was homegrown i was <laughs> it was miami it was homegrown talent uh, Bo, Tony the Tiger, Kid Curry, Cocked on the Radio, Joe Nasty, DJ Laz, Felix. I mean, they were these are guys. Yeah, they love to be on the radio, but they, they didn't have that big voice. You know, they were just normal guys, and that was always the, the, the standard there. Did you ever perform at uh, Rick's Bar in Hialeah? I lived in Rick's Bar. I had my own room in that hotel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit, I, I knew remember it. I knew that the, one, the one night, well, it went through a couple of changes. What was the name of the hotel when it was Rick's Bar? Because I don't, it went through so many changes. Howard Johnson I, is the one it was I a, remember. Was it Howard? Yeah, it was Howard yeah. Johnson. I remember Howard Johnson, the Sheridan. The Sheridan. Now, now yeah, it's yeah. a Holiday Inn. It's a Holiday Inn now? Okay. Yeah. And I remember, the. I used to love that hotel because I, I, I think whoever owned that hotel, like, they were a fan of, of the acts because they let us do whatever the hell we wanted to. Like, Coro destroyed his room. He, he turned his mattresses upside down. He broke lamps. He used to take ice and knock on your door. And if you opened it, he would, throw, he would cover the peak hole with, with tape and then knock on the door. I thought it was room service. He would throw a bucket of ice in the room. I'm like, you mother... I used to drive me crazy. But George, they never called the, security on us. Of course not. The general manager knew better. Back then, uh, I, I knew the chief back then and the mayor back then. 2,000 people would fit into a Rick's bar at 20 bucks a head. The bar was making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a night. Me, the promoter at the door, it was 20 bucks times 2,000 people. The cops loved the music and all the 33 action. Nobody was going to bother Rick's bar in the 80s back then. There's no way. That was could a you really haven. Could you really fit that many people in that little place? Yeah, I collected the cash, yes. It wasn't, could you add the- <laughs> Of course you did. Of course, <laughs> of course you did, Charlie. You got <laughs> Bro, you, you, which, you get the nightclub and the restaurant portion of it. You open it up, you got uh, 2,000 people in the that's house. That's right, because it had, it had it outside. It had outside, right? They had, you had the outside area, the pool area, the pool and you area. had the restaurant, the restaurant yeah. area. It was alcohol for everybody. Come on in, 20 bucks a head, it's all night long. And this is, and young George back then was like, uh, here's my room key. This is my room key. Uh, oh, oh, you already gave me the room key. Oh, I'm sorry, not you. Let me give you my room key. Oh, boy. <laughs> we, we were just, hey, man, yeah, we'll, be a party. Rock, we'll be a rock stars, man. Everybody, you know what's funny? Um, so yeah. obviously every time I went to come, be, you know, being raised in the Bronx, I, I saw the drugs and I, and, I, and I saw, you know, the worst things in the street, but I was never you know, uh, uh, into drugs. All I did was uh, drink. I was a drinker and uh, smoke weed from time to time, but that was a long time ago. I remember going down there, what? Every time I went, the first thing, hey, you wanna, you wanna come hang out with me? I'm like, uh, I'm good. They're like, you sure? You sure? I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, bro. Um, you know, uh, yeah. And they would take out bags of cocaine. I'm like, no, nah, I'm fine, bro. You got, I can pay you with cocaine. Nah, I'm not Hector Laro. I'm good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that was that was some crazy times, man. It was so hard to promote those shows back in the day, and then do your other job as a cop, and then go back into the nightclub and collect all that money. It was crazy times. I remember you at the Hialeah racetrack. Oh my god! With your with your shorts on and your construction boots and your hat backwards on the middle of that stage with fifteen thousand people. 
singing your ass off, and you were like a deer in the head in the woods, bro. <laughs> yeah, I got, the, I got you, those tapes. What the hell? Yeah, I've seen them too. I've seen them on YouTube. I don't know what the hell we were thinking, but you know, it was it was a time where we were experimenting with clothes. It was not really a target for people like us and uh, the majority of, of, of white America w were buying expensive clothing. And, you know, we thought if we bought a pair of polos, t-shirts, we thought we were like, ooh, La Tigre, you know, we thought we were, we were balling. And uh, I remember the racetrack, man, because um, um, it was the way it was uh, uh, produced. Uh, so the, 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 it wasn't the whole racetrack. You would take a section it was of, a parking of lot. the racetrack. Right, it was this, this, and 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 that place, and and they would walk. Cause I remember smelling all the horse shit walking to the stage because you would smell, <laughs> you would smell all the crap from the horses. Yeah. But it was a free for all. Ten thousand people in the hall tonight. Oh my goodness, this is where. I... <laughs> Highly a racetrack, brother. Oh my goodness. Wait, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm I... gonna I'm gonna pull up a videotape of you over here. I'm gonna pull up that videotape of you again. No, keep talking. I'm gonna find that tape. I'm gonna find that tape. Yeah. So, um, um, did uh, did me and you ever work together? Um, well, not me, Charlie. Uh, Tony. No, I mean, I, I came back. I came into power back in 1996. So I came in a little bit after that. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a youngin. <laughs> You're youngin. Okay. So, so yeah. So you were in already. So freestyle was already pretty much. Hip hop was already the thing. Uh, so. Yeah, but I mean, I grew, just pretty I, much the I, I grew up listening. I mean, I'm, I'm 40, 41. So I grew up listening to freestyle in my, you know, when I was 12, 13, yeah. 14, you yeah. know, uh, I grew up listening to freestyle and I'm a DJ. So uh, the first music I started playing was like, it takes two, uh, Suave, you. I mean, I remember going and buying the vinyls because I had no, no music. I only had cassettes in those times. And I, you know, acquired my freestyle collection and I, 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 it, grew a love for freestyle music and then you know hearing the stories working with you know i worked with mindy and bo i i, I board up board up for her i worked with laz felix i mean and hearing the stories i mean i've been listening to these stories uh for years you know from all the djs and stuff like that and it's just amazing i mean the stuff that you guys did and and now reliving it you know doing the miami one radio with charlie and funky frank it's just it's just amazing you know yeah, you know what the funny thing was back then, Tony? Like, we used to, um, we, we, we were going 100 miles an hour. We didn't know what the fuck was going on. I'm, well, I'm sorry, I'm cursing. Uh, we, didn't know what, we didn't know what the hell was going on. And we were babies, man. We were like, we were in our early 20s. Like, you know, a lot of us left college because the money was so good. And, you know, I was supposed to go into the military. I never went into the military. I came Which straight, branch? Uh, Which branch? Which uh, branch? The, the Marines, homie. So um, that's right, so, baby. <laughs> so <laughs> so I uh, I uh, I I wound up. The song got added to the radio station. So by like in '88, I was already signing up to go to military. And I thank God I didn't sign that piece of paper. I'm like, yeah, I can't make it. I you know I, I got a record that's <laughs> doing very very well right now. So um, um, but yeah, I remember <clears throat> it was such a blur because. They, the major record companies didn't know what to do with freestyle because you ask people to this day, non-whites, the majority of non-whites, uh, or a small portion of non-whites and African-American, they're like, what is that? You know, what freestyle, what do you mean freestyle? Freestyle, freestyle, like freestyling, like rapping? Nah, freestyle music, like, whatever you guys, what did you guys call it? High energy or dance? It, it was mostly, uh, I mean, it, in Miami down here, it was always like freestyle and dance music, yeah. you know? Freestyle, mm -hmm. okay. I don't, because I know in the West Coast they called it high energy dance. Right, right. It was a high. And then in Chicago, dance. and in Chicago they called it old school, and they call it uh, heartthrob music. Mm -hmm. So you know, it was it was a blur. We 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 didn't know the logistics of the music business. We didn't know that you, if you don't go to a radio station or you 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 you, you don't show up to a show or or you pretty much skip on something. That, that's not good for your scorecard on radio uh, for record companies, you know, so because back then record companies, they were paying, you know, they were paying for their artists to get played. You know, we all know that that was going on. So um, <clears throat> a lot of the record companies had, you know, uh, they were in cahoots with a lot of the former, some of them were radio stations and, you know, we didn't know. So we, we, we just went in, did what we had to do and, 
And then we have to do a lot of meet and greets. And after meet and greets, we have to go to the retail. And after the retail, we have to, we have to go to dinner with DJs that were billboard reporters. So it was just so fast. It's like, I just remember, I used to tell people, was I an asshole? Like, no, no, you were cool. You were cool. I'm like, all right, cool. Then we're good. We're good. I mean, yeah, I mean, it definitely, it was, it was a fast-paced environment. I mean, especially once a hit started coming out, it was just like, it, it took it to another level. Um, I mean, what was your all-time favorite song that you ever did? My all-time favorite song that I did was, um, was Without You, because Without You was like a sleeper, right? Without You was the first, my first actual release from Columbia Records, because they wanted something different. They didn't want it to sound like every other freestyle record. And I didn't want it to be without you because I was just hardcore freestyle. I wanted it to be Battle of the Heart, even though Battle of the Heart was released first on an independent label and did very well. It sold over 100,000 copies on Lagosa Records. But then they were like, all right, well, now he's signed to us. So we're going to release something new. So they did this whole photo shoot and they were trying to change my image. They didn't want George Garcia. We're going to have to change your name. And, and, and I remember um, <clears throat> John, I forgot his name, uh, John Coppola. He changed, he came up, what about Le Mans? It's French, it means the world. And I remember I didn't like it, I hated it. I'm like, you know, I'm George Garcia, I'm Puerto Rican, I was raised in New York, I was born in Washington, D.C. Why can't you call me by my, my name? I just doesn't have a ring. And I remember I was pissed off, I didn't like it. Uh, but believe me, I'm so glad I took the name. Um, because George Garcia does not have a ring to it. <laughs> you know, uh, George Le Mans sounds way better. And I remember doing Without You, people weren't ready for a song like that because it sounded totally different from any other dance record that was out. It was kind of hard to break on the dance floors because it didn't have that, that, that punch with the bass and, and the kick and the snare, but it was ready. It was very radio friendly and the women loved it. Drew, they drooled all over it, you know, and uh, it was a record that was written by Philip Andriola. He also co-wrote Battle of the Heart and actually produced the original music Chris Barbosa and Mark, they liked the original music so much, they pretty much mimicked what he did. So um, it was kind of his production, but you know, the credits went to Chris and, and Mark, not taking anything away from them. And I remember that was one of the best records because every time I sang that record, everyone was sleeping. You can, you can hear a pin drop. What's that one, Charlie? No, I found it. <laughs> oh, you did? So what you found you the video? <laughs> What do you got? Yeah, man. What do you got? Like, you, I'm, I'm going to turn it. Can you see anything here? Let me know when you can see it. Uh, you're going to have to yeah. put the camera down. Down? Yeah, there you go. Oh, my goodness. All right, that. so Charlie's taking where, where us back go? to the day of uh, a race racetrack. And I'm, I'm going to crank <laughs> this thing up. And you got it. For, I, I told you, tell him what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a... Uh... Man, a yellow jacket. Charlie, you're the worst camera guy. I can't see nothing. <laughs> Is this freaking... There you go. How about now? Oh my, yeah, right there. Move back a little bit, move back a little bit. There you go. I have no shirt on? No oh, shirt. It's, it's you going off right the, now. Z, the, the short Z Cavaricci with the yellow shirt and the- <laughs> Oh my God, we and the metal hat. cross colors. <laughs> Holy jeez, you got- It's not that easy. Uh, they, oh, they, no put it on, they, put, they put it on pause. Listen. There you go, that, that's a good thing. That means because it's long and people are watching it. It's mm. wordy and hard to read. Mm. It undermines the writer's mm. message you can and the word that. choice is bland. What the hell? Uh, that's not me. No, uh, hey, I'll, have that guy. I'll have to <laughs> edit that part out. <laughs> yeah, please, please edit that one out. But oh, without bro, you, Tony, I, got, but I got a, I don't know where it went, but it's in there somewhere. It's a wow, I'm, and that was on YouTube, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, let me send you the link. It's the you. Copy. It's a compaid one over at the race all track. Right. That's all. That's all I need to know. I, I, I know how to find that. Uh, oh, but without you was one of my favorites. It was, it was, it was a thing that changed freestyle and. Uh, um, I never realized how much of an impact that song was going to have on my life. A lot of people to this day hit me on Facebook and inbox me, and uh, they tell me some really nice things. How it 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 it, it, it people incarcerated, it, it changed their life, and it, it helped them from stress from being all stressed out. I had a lot of uh, people who didn't commit suicide because of that song, and awesome. left me beautiful messages. And you know, a lot of guys were like, you know, I got through that song with my when I got divorced from my wife, or when I got divorced from my husband. Uh, so that that uh, really really resonate it resonates. I mean, you know, I, I take it for granted because 
it, I always tell people there's one thing I'm confident of. There's two things I'm confident of. I know how to be a really good father and I know how to be a really good performer. That's the two things I know how to do really, really good in life. And um, so it kind of, it's, so, it's just, it's just something I could do. Like everyone has a talent. Everyone has a, something that they could do really, really well. That's something that I could do really, really well. So I kind of take it for granted uh, because uh, when people give me compliments, I hate compliments them because I don't know how to return uh, the compliment by a simple thank you for me doesn't it doesn't suffice um, but um, I, I never realized how much how much my music has touched so many people around the world it's crazy it's amazing what it does that I mean it, and, and you never expect it when you're writing it when you're performing it no and... no 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 you're 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 I, you see the lyrics on the piece of paper and then... <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't know what you're gonna do when you're in the recording booth. You, you, you get the song, of course, you know the song ahead of time, and and then you go in, and then you hear the music fresh for the first time. So now you got to get into character, and you got to sing it over and over again until you get the right sound. And when you get the right sound, that's when they keep the tape, and they're like, "All right, let's do that. You're doing good," and you're pretty much telling a story. Uh, after a couple of years, you get used to it. And you know exactly what you need to do when you go in the recording booth. It's awesome. And you're working, you're working on some new projects. I mean, I've heard some of the new songs that, that you've released. We play some of them here on Miami One Radio. Uh, what other stuff you have going on now? So right now, um, we're doing this uh, compilation album called uh, uh, First Family of Freestyle. That is a joint, that song. a joint adventure uh, where we all invested a lot of money into each song. We all own our own songs. And it's being written and produced by Andy Panda and Tony Moran. They're the one who wrote Arabian Nights, Show Me. Uh, they uh, wrote a lot of stuff for Sapphire, for TKA. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just wrote big monster freestyle hits. And... Uh, uh, so um, they saw a couple of years ago what freestyle was doing and they didn't realize how long we've been carrying it because there's not that many freestyle promoters out there. There's a few. I mean, Charlie is one that's known in Florida. A lot of people know Charlie. So, you know, uh, and there's a couple others, but, you know, they do once, oneers, you know, not, not many. Um, so every state has their one promoter. And... Um, they saw some concerts with me and Charlie. Uh, I think it was the la it wasn't Charlie because that was the last one that we did. They shut down the park, so that wasn't Charlie. Oh, was it? It wasn't you, Charlie? Yeah, they yeah, bro. Yeah. Mayor Mar Park. I tried to get you on stage. It was twelve o'clock. You were upset. I was upset, and it wasn't my fault. The city pulled the light on us. We had five thousand people there. It was an amazing yeah. night. Until this day, I'm pissed off. You weren't on that stage. Well, you I remember, were, but. You know. I was backstage. I, I remember Charlie was stressing out because he was trying to rush everybody on. And all of a sudden, I see these officers on stage and the, sh and the sound went out. And uh -huh. I was like, what the hell is going on? So I was backstage, ready to go on. And then someone tells me, it's shut down. You can't, you can't do it. So right after that, I went right on Instagram. And I said, listen, it's, not, it's the city shutting it down. The police are shutting it down. I'm here. I went to show Florida that I was there. You know, not to, you know, just to save face and to, just to hook up Charlie, let him know that I was there. That's so I did great. that right after and Charlie couldn't stop apologizing, but I knew that it was out of his hands. So, but um, uh, that day was, 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 was pretty cool. I, I think we, I think we wound up doing it again, but it wasn't with you this time. I think it was with, with another promoter and, um, but it wasn't as good as the first one. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't impactful like the, like the first one, and uh, uh, it was just unfortunate that I couldn't get on stage. But what are you going to do? You learn. You learn from these mistakes. I mean, I had yes. Cynthia on. I had uh, Tony Moran on. Uh, TKA. I interviewed them, um, and I mean, the song, the project. You know, all of you coming together with, uh, with as a as a family again and, and producing these tracks is just amazing. I mean, and the songs are really good. They're, they're really they're good amazing. songs. So. We'll touch back on that concert, um, Charlie. But yeah, I'm sorry, I got off track. So the song "Freestyle Families," we it's 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 a whole bunch of us. It's uh, uh so the the pillars are me, Suave, uh, TKA, Judy Torres, Cynthia, Sapphire, Brenda K. Star, Betty from Sweet Sensation, Naomi, wow. um, and I 
think that's it. And we're all doing duets. We're all doing duets. And the only way that you can get the song is through uh, the family of freestyle. first family of freestyle.com. Yeah. That's the only way you get it. It's like Beatport. You can get the remix, you can get the acapella, you can get. So we vested in that. And unfortunately, it was doing really good. But then Corona happened. And, uh, you know, everything was just at a standstill. We couldn't promote it like we wanted to promote it. And the next single is me and Naomi. And I can tell you right now, I want it. I say, if you're going to pair me with anyone, you have to pair me with Naomi. That Cuban, Dominican sister could blow. I mean, she, asthma and everything. She sounds just the way she sounded back then. And this song is so powerful, this next song. You gotta um, give me the exclusive, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good yeah. luck, man. Good luck. Frankie, Frankie Cutlass is already up our sleeve, bothering uh, our pocket, bothering us already. I see, so I see another... him. I see him on Facebook. They're doing his thing, bringing you guys into his house, his studio on Friday nights. Yeah. I, I see yeah, you guys. Yeah. I, I yeah, see what yeah. you guys are yeah. doing out there. George, yeah, yeah. Give, 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 throw Miami a bone, man. Everything's always in <laughs> New York. Give Miami a bone, man. That's not a bad idea because the writer is Andy Liz in Orlando. He's from Florida. Yeah. So that's something that we could definitely talk about. Yeah, man, definitely give it to Miami first. Why not? Let's blow it out of the roof over there. Give it to you Miami. Know? You're, you're, yeah. you're going to be here. In, well, you're, you're supposed to be here in June. But yeah. Like you said, because of everything going on. But when you come down here, Judy Doris is going to be on this show with you. And so is Cynthia. And so is Betty and a right. bunch of other artists, it would be awesome to have you guys get on stage and do some kind of duet for us. Oh, down okay, there. definitely. It, it'll right. be the first family of freestyle live in concert for the first yeah. time in Miami. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I think the name of the song, if I'm not mistaken, I, haven't, I think it's called Who You Are, Who You Are, uh, featuring uh, George Lamont and Aobi, first family of freestyle. It's a powerful song. Uh, and uh, anyway, you, you guys get to hear it, but... Uh, yeah, man, I'm going to say here first, man. I'm going to do it for Miami One Radio. I'm going to tell Andy, I'm like, go. we're going to do it here. I said, you can't, I can't go back on my work because they got recording me, bro. So, That's yeah. right, brother. <laughs> gonna, Miami One Radio has got their my, there. Miami right One Radio has got to have the exclusive, at least a day before everyone else. <laughs> so That's I'll, it. I, I'm, I'm I'll, you know, <laughs> we're going to promote the hell out of that one. You know that. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we have to. We have to, man. But yeah, that, that, that's, yes. No, no, I, I wanted to say, I knew you were going to be what you are before you even knew, because I, re that's right, I recorded the, the reactions, the human element, when nobody was doing videotapes. When you were on that stage with 15,000 people, I knew what I had here. You were a young kid. Thank you for choosing Zoom. What's going on here? Mm. Yeah, I think if you don't buy the time, they, they'll, they'll cut you off. So it's got to be more than, if it goes more than yeah, half an hour. About 40, 40 minutes, yeah. Yeah, 40 we, minutes. Are we so. okay? So, well, we'll find out until we get cut uh, off. But keep talking. I, I mean, <laughs> or, or we can, you know, cut it and come oh. back. And, yeah, and come do, back. Do yeah, if we get cut off, just continue. Yeah. What were you going to say, Sean? What I wanted to say was, when I saw the human emotions, when I saw these kids crying on that stage watching you perform, and I knew that Power 96 was no longer go going to be doing freestyle music because they were forced to take it off the air. I knew there was going to be something big where it was going to affect me as a promoter to keep this train rolling on all these nightclubs. One day, somehow, I knew it was going to come back. And that's why I recorded those videotapes. You need to go watch yourself on that stage when you were just a young kid because I knew you were going to be what you are today, Mr. Garcia. Way oh, back man, then. Thank you so much. It's funny, man, because I, I thought I thought I I've seen them all, man, but I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to record that one and repost it. That was gonna be reposted, buddy. Thank you for for but you know what's funny? I the one thing a performer gets to see is so you're on stage, right? And you're looking at me right now. Imagine thousands of people looking at you. When you do the arenas now, you can't really see everybody, only in festivals you could. Well, you can read and tell everybody's story just by their emotion and their gestures. You can tell when someone is not liking your show. You can tell when someone is having an issue, and but they're enjoying your show. You can tell when someone is drunk out of their mind. You just see it all right in front of you, and you're living this. So I feed off of that because... Um, that's what gives me gas, you know, that's what gives me gasoline to, 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 to rev it up. 
and I know when it's going down like that, when I need to bring it up, you know? So every time someone tells me, George, can you send me your show tape so we could do the show? I'm like, no, I'm not going to send it to you because I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I need to, I need to feel the vibe. I need to know what's going on over there. If they're drunk out of their mind, then I want to start with Bat of the Heart right off the top. So that when I play Bat of the Heart, they lose it, you know, hit them hard. If I see that it's a long day and they're hot, you know, you know, I'll start doing some salsa something just so just to get them to move, you know. Um, but um, that's the one thing I always I always get to see, Charlie. Uh, I appreciate what you said. And I always see those reactions, and I take those to heart because those are pictures that are mental pictures. I get those. I remember a lot of those those memories um, from performing in in different uh, arenas in different cities. Oh God, what is he gonna take out now? Charlie's bringing out the box. Uh, he's probably gonna bring out a freaking disco ball. Don't bring out that damn disco ball. Hey, hey, do you remember this particular moment in time? It was on a stage, okay? It was on a stage. You handed me a bottle. You handed me a bottle, and I did this. <laughs> oh, that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. bottle, that bottle went down. <laughs> that was, uh, wasn't that in the club? Wasn't that a Cafe Iguana? No, that was in Bimini. Bimini, oh my. No, but you that were was, drinking, you weren't drinking Blue Labor, brother. You were drinking that, 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 uh, Pitbull uh, liquor. Uh, Pitbull Viola, liquor, Viola yeah. 305, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah Viola, 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 Viola. Vola, vola, oh, vola. Vola, vola. Yeah, vola. man, that vola. Thing, I, I, don't do, I, I don't do vodka. That's my drink right there, blue label. Me that, that's, that's good stuff right there, right there, that blue label. Yeah, not much has changed. Charlie hasn't changed a bit. I'm a, he's still the same. Still the same party I, animal. I, I, this bottle's waiting for you when you come down here. <laughs> when we went to Bimini, right? Yeah, yeah. It was his show. He put the show together with Laz. Right. And what happens the minute he gets there? Hey, Charlie, what's up? He goes, I, fucking, I lost my phone. I can't find oh, my phone, yeah. George. I'm like, what do you mean you can't find your phone? I'm freaking out. I got everybody's contact. Everybody's calling me, and I can't call nobody. I'm like, that's typical Charlie. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, we, we couldn't see what was going on in Bimini in Miami for that whole weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I lost my little bag with $3,000. Oh, my God. Night. Yeah. Yeah, that was a crazy day, man. But um, well, the, that the Bahamians. <laughs> oh yeah, those Bahamians. Yeah, but we had, we had a great time. I actually had to leave the island because there was a there was a storm. So the only way to leave was I literally got on a boat, and I left with one of Laz's people. They took me two hours. I was like this. <laughs> I was like, God, it was the best. Though. That was a great experience. We, we we went there the day before on Laz's boat and he blew a prop. We so oh, we went from bro we went from sixty miles an hour down to fifteen miles an hour instead of a two hour flight or two hour pedal over there it took us six hours. Yeah. Holy crap! I remember, I remember one, of my, one of my buddies uh, sent him the prop from down here over there. Uh, you remember that? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I I remember that day because. He was, and then he loses his phone. So it's like everything that could go wrong was going wrong, you know? But you know what the funny thing is? He snapped out of it the day of the show. You would never think he lost $3,000. You never thought he lost his phone. He was having a great time. And that's one thing about Charlie. Sometimes Charlie's has a little bit too much fun. And I'm like, uh, remember me? I'm supposed to go on stage? Fuck it, come on with me. I'm, I'll get on stage with you. I'm like, here we go. It's gonna be another oh, yeah. Charlie Rodriguez bro, production. It, it, it's about fun, brother. If you, if you can't have fun while you're doing this, don't do it. I agree, I agree 100%. But you know what's funny? Uh, um, um, a lot of people in this business, sometimes, uh, uh, I'm not gonna name names, but yeah, sometimes they need to loosen up. They're a little too tight, you know? They gotta loosen up and have fun with life. And I'm a big advocate of, uh, you got to enjoy what you do. If you don't enjoy what you do, then why the hell are you doing it? And this is why I'm, I'm still doing what I do. This is why Charlie's doing what he's doing. This is why you're doing what you're doing. I mean, you have to. Well, I'm a freestyle fan. Tony's a freestyle fan. If, if you're not a freestyle fan, why promote it, man? Yeah. Right. You got to right. love, love what you do, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, you've, also does, you, you've, also, you've also done some disco shows too, right? Sure. I love, I love disco. I love freestyle. And, and as we get older, the disco people, they don't want to go out so much you know anymore but the freestyle people they got plenty of juice in the tank yeah, we got a lot of juice <laughs> when we, well what happened was we learned from our predecessors 
GQ, the band GQ, used to live in the Bronx. So every time I used to walk to Yankee Stadium, although I was a Met fan, I used to, I remember when the, the Yankees had games, a lot of girls used to hang out in the park. Right across the park, GQ, the band, they used to pack all their instruments into the band for shows, and I would see them doing their shows, and I remember they were smoking. Some of them were smoking some God knows what dust, uh, you know, drinking. Not all of them, like the band members, they were just partying too much but you know it was the it was the late 70s and that's what they were doing early 80s so they were they were rocking hard we learned we learned you know we're gonna take it easy we're gonna drink a little bit smoke a little bit we're not gonna do anything hard and i guess that what that's what sustained us that's what kept our juices going we a lot of the 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 the, the disco people they party a little too hard man back in in the 70s i get it man i get it, it was all about cocaine back in the day so our stuff was crack, and we saw what we saw what thing was happening to crack patients, and we were like, "Yeah, we're gonna skip nah, on crack. We don't need we're that. Gonna do no crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need that um, shit, man. Just enjoy yourself. A little bit of alcohol. Yeah, we're a great time in life. And you're having an amazing crack. time. Exactly. A, a, a bottle of Johnny next to you, and we're ready to party. Says, everywhere. Say no more. I'll drink it all. Give me all that dark liquor. Shit. That's, uh, I've never seen the white bottle before. That looks pretty cool. Is, is that, that, uh, that is that from the um, Game of Thrones? Uh, I don't know where it's from, man. Yeah, I just I, I got I a box it, at the house. I, I, see I have a, a Game of Thrones one, so it's cool. Oh, that's you know, pretty awesome. It's, it's good, brother. It's good. It's good stuff, man. But yeah, so, freestyle so, music, George yeah. Lamon, Miami, Power 96, Miami 1, Ocean Drive, Coconut Grove. Bro, it's just a lifetime of memories and memories and memories. I don't care what house you go into, what, what uh, memory bank you go into. It's about freestyle. And, yeah, it's and, about the music. Yeah. And you, bro, your your lyrics, they tell a story. You know, you, you, and your voice, you got one of the baddest voices in freestyle around. Thank man. God, yeah. Thank you. You man. really thank do. Thank you thank you should be, I know where you should be. And yeah. And and uh you got one of those top voices where you freaking be living in a freaking fifty million dollar mansion in Los Angeles somewhere. You're a superstar, yeah, yeah. brother. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. I, I grew up listening to a lot of really good singers. And the one thing I always remember is projection. Projection is what you need to do when you need to have the last person in the row hear you. And uh, that's the one thing I learned, how to project my voice, how to maintain it. A lot of people, oh, how do you keep your voice? I'm like, I don't scream much before a show. I don't drink a lot before a show. I think a couple of times I wait after to get wasted. And then, you know, I just don't talk the whole day. And when it's time to go on stage, you save it. You save it for the stage. And, and remember, we only have like, what, 50 to 20 minutes show? You know, now I can do a show up to 45 to an hour if I want it, you know? So um, the last uh, Salsa Cruise I did, I did a whole hour show with Salsa and Freestyle. And the uh, people went bananas on that Salsa Cruise, you know? Hey, hey, Charlie, so what date do we have this concert set for? Because I know you moved it back. What's the date that you have it for now? The, the new date now is October the 10th. October However, the 10th. I, I do have other dates on standby, but I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I, I have to get yeah. the same lineup, everybody together, and you know, push it back and back. And I hope October 10 is good, because uh, man, it's it's tough right now. It, it's tough. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I got... I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. You you talk. You can finish. No, because I've got, I've got other shows lined up for February of of uh, 2021. I don't know if they're going to be able to go. Yeah, so, and so I'm hearing I'm hearing a lot of rumblings, and and from what the governor is saying here in New York City is that it'll probably be a whole year to eighteen months, you know. So you're talking about almost close to a year and a half of no work, uh, no concerts. Mm -hmm. I mean, what we do is social. How are you going to have people six feet away from you at a concert? There's just no way it's going to be done. So I hopefully, no right? We, no one can make. I'm not making any money right now. I just want to let people know, like nothing. So. You know, thank God I saved for a rainy day, but still, you know, sooner or later it's going to run out, you know, and I got to do what I got to do. But in the meantime, um, there's a possibility I might be moving to Florida just to get away from New York City for a little bit. I have family down there and I might be going sooner than next, like after this month. So I'll be in Florida uh, and um, I'll probably catch up with a lot of relationships of a lot of friends that I have down there. I'm going to start recording with a lot of people that I've been wanting to record with. And I'm going to take advantage of the time, the downtime that I have to work. If I have to drive down to Miami, I'll drive to Miami to work with someone. If I have to go to Tampa, I'll go to Tampa to work with someone. But I'm going to make my time production while I'm there. I need to soak in. And Laz, me and Laz have been talking about since the Bimini 
uh, we did a concert. He would call me up and he goes, I got a beat. I got an idea. Let's do it. Come down to my perfect time. I could drive down there. I get into the studio with him and his people and we'll come up with some bangers. So nice. that's what I plan nice. to do. Yeah, that's what I plan to do. I want to get that Florida sound. And um, I love New York, but, you know, I did it already. You know, now it's time for me to get, you know, that Texas sound, that Houston sound, that West Coast, that Florida down South sound. I want to work with it while I still got my chops. So um, I'll be out there. I'll definitely be hitting you up, Charlie. And um, yeah, man, I'm just, like I said, you know, let's, let's just hope they come up with a vaccine and, and, and everything is going to be okay, you know, but for now, it's all up in the air. I hope so, bro, because I'm getting tired of this stuff, you know? It's, it's yeah, man, out I know. On me, man. I know. Did you see the video I did with the Marvin Gaye? I, I put your photo on there. You saw it? Oh, I saw it. I was watching. I go, that guy's familiar. <laughs> and, you know, I, I watched it again. I go, son of a gun. That's me, man. <laughs> so, so, so between me and you, and this is the first time I'm saying it, I hope Sal doesn't kill me. So Sal Abatello was, uh, was uh, he had the virus. And um, yeah, Salo Botello, for people you don't know, he's, uh, he's pretty much like the godfather of freestyle here in New York City and hip hop. He started uh, back in the, in the 70s with hip hop and uh, old school hip hop, uh, original hip hop. And then he started doing big freestyle concerts out in New York City. And he's pretty, he's the one that gets all the freestyle artists together here. He uh, got really, really sick and he was in a hospital for a couple of days. He was really, really scared. Um, you know, it was touch and go. And then, you know, I was sending him nothing but positive video because he just, he was just weak. So I was sending him videos every day, just funny stuff, just to get his mind off of it. And he wouldn't reply and I get it. They were telling me why. And uh, I, after a week, I get this reply. I looked at my phone and I, I didn't have a notification. So it was WhatsApp and I'm like, oh shit, Sal sent me a message. So he says, can you do me a favor? And I said, sure. What's up? And I, didn't, I kind of wanted to tell him, how are you? How are you feeling? But I didn't want to touch that. And he says, can you sing a song for me? He's never told me to sing a song for him. He says, can you sing What's Going On by Marvin Gaye? I says, give me a couple hours. I'll do it for you. And I don't know. How, I took it in a way where, God, I hope nothing happens to him. I hope this is not him yeah. reaching for something, you know? So that's where my head was. And I remember I got into the studio. This is my studio here. Um, and I didn't leave the whole day. I recorded. I told him, I'll get it to you in 20 minutes. He goes, no, 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 take your time. I said, all right. I don't know why he asked me, but he did. And I, I didn't even hesitate. So I went in and I recorded all the backgrounds, all the talkings, all the, uh, you know, I recorded it here. And uh, I sent it to a friend of mine to mix it for me because he has a better ear in mixing. And uh, we put it out. Right now, it has close to 50,000 likes on Facebook. And it has about 12 to 13,000 plays, I think, the last time I saw. Um, so it's doing really, really good. And I wanted to sing the song, and I wanted to show a lot of the people that are on the front lines. A lot of my friends who are nurses and doctors got infected. They're, thank God they're okay. But, you know, there was a lot of scares there for a lot of them. And, you know, I couldn't, I didn't even want to, put it this way. I, at one point, I, um, I needed to go to the doctor to do a test or something from cardio, the cardiologist. I didn't even want to go to the hospital. I was so scared to go to the hospital. It wasn't even a hospital. It was just his office. I didn't even want to go there, you know? So imagine all these nurses and all these doctors and all these EMT and just in the epicenter of it all. You just don't know where it's coming. And you got this mind game playing with you. So uh, when I did that song, the first person I saw, I started looking for pictures. And the first person on my fucking camera was Charlie with his big face and that mask. And I'm like, why the hell is he? Oh, okay, that's his, that's his job. I forgot he does something like that. So, so I know that's like your second job. I don't know what your primary job was. But uh, and when I saw that, I was like, well, let me start off with Charlie. And then uh, from then on, I just started getting pictures from everybody just uh, supposed to get on there. And it came out really, really good. So if you, can, if you guys want, go to my George Lamont at, at, at Facebook. I think Charlie reposted it, so you can watch it on Charlie's page. I saw that video, and I heard it, and it reminded me of a video from the 1960s. Or, yeah, from the 60s, a black and white TV in New York with that beautiful music in the background. What you did is very iconic, and it's going to last forever. That was, good, that was a... Bad, your voice, the video, it was amazing. It, it just took me back. And you can watch it over and over and over again. It's a you great, empty, great pick. Yeah, did you see how empty the streets were? Yeah. 
Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's, a, it's a ghost town. You know, yeah. I text Sal over the weekend because I, I heard he wasn't feeling well and, and he texted me back quick. Um, so he's doing a lot better than what he was doing. And, yeah. and you're right, you know, uh, the, the music wouldn't be what it is today uh, with, without everything that Sal has done and, and much respect for him. And, and I'd, I would hate for anything to happen to Sal. And, yeah, uh, I'm yeah. just glad. I'm just glad he's getting much better, man. Yeah, he's getting better. He's back home now. He's got to wear his mask, and uh, you know he's just trying to get better. Yeah, I have a lot of friends. This thing is really it's a it's a monster. It, it what it does is I mean you know what it does. Yeah, and and and, and uh, you know I, I wouldn't want to wish this on my worst enemy. You know, they say it's like someone an elephant just stepping on your chest and you're trying to get air but you can't. You know, so I, I would I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. But on a lighter note. Yeah, he was one of the ones that put not two groups, not three groups, not four groups. He put like 15 groups together and everyone started doing, ah, okay. So instead of having one act do like 20 minutes or 30, we'll just do five minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You do 20 <laughs> and you do 30. And we got a three, four fucking hour marathon freestyle concert, you know, and everybody <laughs> ran with it. And it was a good money maker, and, uh, uh, and it's still going to this day. It, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's never stopped. It just kept on going. And, and we, you know, doing this interview with you, it, we, we cannot not talk about the reason how and why Freestyle came to Miami. You know, Funky Frank, the program director back then at Power 96. That's right, oh, that's right Funky yeah. Frank. That's right. He brought yeah, it right. over. And, and, and Funky Frank is the program director at Miami One Radio. Funky Frank is the one that gave me my first shot at Power 96 and doing those big concerts. So nice. Funky Frank down in Miami is responsible for bringing this music down here. And, yeah, um, I remember, man. Yeah, I remember. He's always hit me up on Facebook. We talk a lot through Facebook. And uh, when you told me he was doing your programming, you know, um, it, it just fits perfect. You know what I mean? That guy was, uh, I know he slowed down now, but he was just as wild as you, bro. <laughs> Maybe a little more wild. <laughs> Wait, well, he, he he did work for Power ninety six. <laughs> <Yeah. like> <laughs> oh my god, bro! We all got stories from back in the day. We would do the live broadcast Wednesday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday. Man, I spent a lot of money on Power ninety six on live broadcast. Oh yeah, and we, we bro, Bo Griffin, Don Cox, Leo Vela. That was some amazing parties back in the day, Tony. It was it was crazy. I don't know how I did it. It was it was amazing. Tony, did was they that... do a did they do a live simulcast yes. over the yeah, radio yes. station? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yes. we, we would yes. do the music, yeah. the DJs, everything would be simulcast on the radio. Yeah. Usually for two Dude. hours. Yeah. They don't do that anymore. Radio stations over there. They still do that live song? No. They, they no. don't even got clubs anymore. <laughs> no, no. no, but like, uh, like, con like concerts, like concerts. They don't do like concerts. No, con like that. Con concerts they, no. They, they, they've never done because, you know, artists, not freestyle artists, but obviously hip hop artists and stuff like that. They tend, I mean, that happened to, I, I think, either Hot in New York or KTU. One of those stations broadcasted, and every other word was F bomb. You know, they, they got fired uh, for that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah you, yeah. you got to be very careful with the concerts live on the air you know hey real quick i want to mention yeah. what we got on the air i totally forgot this friday i have a new single coming out it's called week uh it's a new record that uh was written by a friend of mine named jimmy and tony um it's a ballad and uh i forgot to tell people it's I haven't released a song in almost two years so this one uh this is uh, uh something that's released on my imprint i produced it and uh, it's a ballad it's a beautiful song so uh it's called week and it'll be out this Friday on all platforms at uh, twelve at nine o'clock in the morning. It'll be out um, this 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 Friday. You gotta get it to me so I can play it with yeah, the interview. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh my bad. My bad. I should have. I should have. Damn. But um um um. Yeah. Well, I'll, well, well, here's what we'll do: is I'll, I'll play the interview back on Thursday, and then we'll release a song right there after the interview. So check it out, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. This is my new single, Week. First radio station to play it right here, Miami One Radio. Check it out. 
Ah, you got it, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not going to send you anything. <laughs> I, I got to go out and find it. <laughs> Don't worry. When, when, when George moves down here, we'll mm. go to his address. Yeah, they'll find yeah. me. He'll figure this retired guy will find me. Hey, um, so yeah, just uh, Charlie, I'll send it to you. You can forward it to Tony. All right, brother. Awesome, man. All right, brother. All right, man. So, uh, listen, oh. I got to go, guys. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? No, that was awesome, man. That was perfect. Yeah, we, we've covered everything, brother. The next time I see you, it's right over here, brother. I'm ready, man. <laughs> Make sure you put that on the side for me. Keep it nice and cold. <laughs> we got you covered. George right. Lamont, Miami One Radio, we love you back then, and we love you today, brother. I love you too, Florida and Miami. Keep it real. Miami One, te quiero mucho. Nos vemos.